Good morning, everyone. I'm Eleanor Shano, and I've got a little, little story to tell you. As you notice, Yvonne is not here. Yvonne became ill just a few minutes ago, and about uh, four and a half minutes ago, I walked into the newsroom, and I was told, better get upstairs and do the Yvonne Forston show. So it's you and me for the next half hour. Uh, we have some exciting things to talk about. We have a Monroeville housewife here who has uh, told me in just a couple of minutes that we had to chat that uh, she got a whole bag of groceries free and she's going to tell us how we can do the same thing. Then we're going to talk to a lady about solving family finances and later in the show well, great things for the entire family to do this weekend. As you know, the circus is in town, and we have um, some people from the circus right here in the studio, and we'll have you meet them later. First, I'd like you to meet Eileen Samuels. Eileen is a Monroeville housewife. Eileen brought with her a big bag of groceries that did not cost her a cent. Now, Eileen, I know that I do what a lot of women do. You clip those coupons out of the newspaper every week or you clip them out of magazines and you put them in a little envelope and you take them to the supermarket right. and sometimes I'm amazed at how much money I can save. Now that is not though what you are doing, right? I have a hobby that's called refunding which is saving box tops and labels and in turn you either get money back on what you've bought or you get a free coupon. And for this particular program, I decided to see how much I could get for free. And mm -hmm. I came up with a bag of groceries for $9.87, all free, just by sending away what they tell you either on the package or in our local newspapers or uh, just any way that I find out how you can send away for things. Okay, can we, can we take your grocery okay, roughly, bag apart? Okay, uh, roughly, two weeks ago in the, uh, our local papers, we were given a coupon or a form, which it's called, and if you save three of these UPC codes, that's these little line codes, mm -hmm. tear them off your boxes, put them in the mail, uh, in the mail you will receive a coupon for a free box of 200 Kleenex tissues. Mm -hmm. Okay. A couple weeks ago, Pillsbury wanted us to meet this new product called Pillsbury Plus, which is an excellent cake. I've tried it, and all they did was literally give us a free coupon to go to the store and get this 50. Right, where, this, did, where did you get this coupon? I got this out of our local newspaper. Okay. The Press and the Post Gazette, both. Now, okay. In each case, Eileen, you had to send this coupon no, this to one, the No, this one was literally nothing. This was just in our newspaper. Just send what they tell you. No, mm -hmm. I mean, just use with the coupon okay. in the newspaper. That's okay. what you do. Yeah, okay. okay. Now, there's a problem, though, with, with sending the coupons to the companies. You know, you have to have a 13 cent stamp. Right, okay. But right now, for instance, this particular product is a 65 cent product. Mm -hmm. So, if you use it anyhow, and everybody uses paper towels, then all you do is save the little code lines on here for three packages of Terry towels, put it in the mail, and you'll get a coupon for 65 cents for another one. Mm -hmm. And the same was true with this particular Viva product. Three packages of Viva towels brought us back a coupon for a free Viva towel. Okay, how did you how did you get started with this? I mean, did you just I got started in college. When I was in college, I had a boss who had seven right. children. He tried the very first product of dishwasher all and insisted that all of anybody he knew was going to get a free coupon of dishwasher mm -hmm. all. And I was introduced to refunding there, and I've been doing it since I got married. I married 18 do you, years. Or, or do you not sometimes end up with products that you don't like, that you don't sometimes, use? But I would say 90% of the products I have, I have tried from refunding I have really enjoyed. Okay, I did this the other day. I did it my way, taking all of the things out of the the, um, the newspaper, and I ended up with a whole envelope full. Right. First of all, it took me twice as long to go through the supermarket because, you know, you have to keep <laughs> looking, where is this? Ended up with grape jelly. Nobody in our house eats grape jelly. I came home with a whole bunch of stuff that, that actually I'm sure is going to sit on the shelf. Now, you say that you have not found, or are you selective? I mean, I'm very have... selective because actually you're doing something that everyone does, and that is to collect the, the coupons and just use them to use them. Yeah. I will use that particular coupon that's in the paper if I can get a refund on it or I can get a free product then it makes it worthwhile and even if you have to give the jelly away and you get your money back you have nothing invested. My daughter was kidding me she said mother the only thing you didn't buy was dog food we don't have a dog I mean it was the only coupon that I brought back right. home. Right well we me. don't use dog food <laughs> or cat food anymore but for instance uh, we'll get back to this with uh, this particular ragu we came out with thick and, and zesty uh, spaghetti sauce they mm -hmm. want us to try it so if you try one put it in the mail you get a coupon for another one free okay now how much time do you spend every day sending these these coupons you can back spend home? quite a bit of time I would say on the average of 10 hours a month maybe mm -hmm. even more I would like to show you 
another way of uh, getting these different uh, coupons through the mail, and that is that above some Del Monte products, for instance, this will be hanging in the supermarket. You might mm -hmm. take it home and forget about it. I don't. I take it home and I look up and see how many Del Monte products I have on my shelves. Mm -hmm. And if you have anywhere from 10 to 18, you can get a coupon in the mail back for a dollar to two dollars. And this can be quite a healthy savings on your supermarket shopping. Another way of getting them is that if I recently bought, this summer I bought Blend, and this was right on the bottle. Mm -hmm. Actually just hanging there. You just have to read it. Uh -huh. It's a sense of awareness, isn't it, I mean, I mean, a lot of us don't even, don't even look at the packages. We just rip them off and... and right. I save attention. everything, and that's when you start refunding. You do save everything. Okay, let me ask you one important question. How much money do you think you save in a year on your groceries? I would say produce? roughly about $500. $500. Well, it is indeed uh, worth <laughs> worth the effort uh, if that. And what about these magazine ads, uh, coupons in magazines? I mean, you go well, through and there are dozens and dozens. Dozens of times. You can only use those in the supermarket if you buy the product, and that's when they become health, ha uh, you know, good. But I subscribe to uh, magazines also that tell me what to do with refunding, and anyone mm -hmm. can do this. I've been doing getting the magazines for 10 years now, and it really has changed the outlook of my okay, hobby. Now what, what is this? This is a, a hobby public? magazine, and it's called Firefly, and uh, that's what tells me what to say, sometimes where to send. And you get some right. worthwhile and information, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Eileen, I'm sure that we could uh, spend the rest of the program talking about uh, how much money you've saved and how you've gone about it, but I think uh, we've gotten the idea across to our viewers. Pay attention to the packages. Uh, look at the labels. If it says uh, send in this coupon, do it. Here's Eileen Samuels, a housewife from Monroeville. She says she saves about $500 a year on a hobby called refunding. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back to the show. In case you joined us late, I'm Eleanor Shano. I'm sitting in today because Yvonne Forston became ill. We are uh, visiting now with Susan Stewart. She's a family therapist at the Western Psychiatric Institute. And we're going to talk about something that touches all of our lives, family finances. Susan, would you say that money is probably the most or the single uh, reason why more marriages dissolve, why uh, there are more domestic problems? Well, I don't know that I'd want to pin it down to that, but I would say that money is enormously important and something that women in particular have never paid enough attention to. Uh, in our society, your, your status, your, mm -hmm. your role in life, your self-esteem is often based on how much money you, you mm -hmm. earn. Mm -hmm. And women have never paid enough attention to this. You know, money is power. Well, money is, is power, money is mobility, money is independence, money is a lot of things. We know that. And I think the problem that a lot of women perhaps are finding today is um, we have many more women joining the labor force. They work for several years. They have that independence. They get married. They begin to raise a family. All of a sudden, their, their independence is gone, or at least psychologically it is. How can a woman hold on to that feeling of independence? What does she do? Does she work out some sort of an arrangement with her husband and say, all right, you give me some money, I open my own private checking account? Okay, this is one of the solutions, but I think that 
what happens is there's not enough attention paid to what happens to a woman when she stops working psychologically. Mm -hmm. It's really a double whammy because it's um, what with the, with the number of women who are now working with the women's movement, staying home is no longer, uh, motherhood in and of itself is no longer the honorable profession it used to be. Susan, there are a um, lot of, uh, excuse me for interrupting, but there are, you know, a lot of people that say uh, actually the, the, the job of a homemaker, the job of a mother, uh, it, it, it should be, it is indeed a full-time job and one should be paid for it. Do you agree? Uh, I would agree. As a matter of fact, um, many of the European nations have children's allowances which subsidize the whole notion that having children is a function in life, a, a worthwhile way mm -hmm. of spending time. Our society doesn't. Our society puts a very low priority, money-wise, on mm -hmm. childcare and, and homemaking in general. So that the woman who stops working loses her sense of productivity, of self-esteem. And the difficulty is, how can a couple work together to, to handle that kind of loss of self-esteem and to reestablish a sense of, of independence? All right, how can um, they do it? We've identified okay. the problem. Now let's look for some there solutions. There are a couple of ways. One, you're absolutely right that a woman should have control over a certain amount of money on her own. Uh, should she, she have should, her own uh, She should have either her own checking, checking account, account or her own savings account. Some money that she can, she can do with what she wants, she can support a political cause her husband might not agree with, she can buy something for herself that she doesn't have to make apologies for. Well, she can for. buy him a present. I think this right. is, right. Uh, from women I've talked to, this is probably the, the thing that bothers them the most. Uh, their husband's birthday, Christmas, an anniversary, and they, they feel very awkward. How do I buy him a present when I'm taking money out of his back pocket and buying him? Maybe in, in many cases something he really doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. want or need. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's a very important consideration, just the freedom to buy a present for someone you care for. And you, you, you do say, though, that this, this is important and that uh, the... Uh, what about the, the separate checking account, though? Would that, would that create some sort of a, uh, um, a divisiveness in a marriage? Well, you see, I, I don't think the checking account in and of itself would. I think the question of how the husband views his wife's uh, position within the marriage, uh, if he, without thinking, treats her as if he, she were a dependent, gives mm -hmm. her an allowance, for instance, then I think the question of her having a separate uh, checking account could be very divisive. She could resent getting a handout. Mm -hmm. um, if they talk over the matter together and decide that child rearing is her job for which she should get paid, uh, then I think that it puts a different connotation on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a very interesting subject and um, we're going to continue our conversation with Susan Thomas right after this.
Welcome back. We're talking with Susan Stewart, a family therapist at the Western Psychiatric Institute. And Susan uh, deals with a lot of problems as a family therapist, but one of the most common ones deals with money. That's what we've been talking about this morning. Susan, do you think that enough couples sit down and discuss how they are going to manage their finances before they get married, or is it all after the fact and they have a, a problem uh, and they don't know how to solve it? In my experience, people who, even the people who try to sit down before they get married and talk these things over, don't real, it's not real to them. Mm -hmm. You know, all they can really focus on is this wonderful life they're going to have together. And the realities of it, no matter what they say, they really can't understand it until they live it. A woman can't understand until she gets in that position of having given up that job and lost that dependence what an impact it's going to make on her. All right. Perhaps it uh, is merely a question of sitting down and communicating. I'm sure that there are an awful lot of women in our audience right now who, are, who can identify with this problem. Maybe they have hesitated to sit down and really on a one-to-one -one basis say, hey look Harry, I mean this is really bothering me and it's been bothering me for a long time. Now let's, let's decide how we're going to resolve it together. I think a lot of women don't think they have the right to do this and that really they need a kind of consciousness raising. I mean, they accept society's low priority mm -hmm. on the kind of work they do. They internalize the resentment, and they, they don't feel they have a right to say to their husband, look, you know, mm -hmm. I, have, I have my rights in this marriage. I, I, I need a share of the money. I need some independence. We have a phone call. Um, you're uh, on the line with Susan Stewart. Good morning. Hello. Uh, yes, I'd like to ask her. Um, I would think I should have a job because we just don't have enough money to get the things that we really need, not just the things that we want, that we really need, like clothes for the kids and more groceries and things like that. But my husband really agreed to me working in, say, a, a chain of department stores. And he says it would be degrading and he doesn't want me to leave the house. And I just wondered if she had any suggestions. He would agree to me watching children through the day, like if I would babysit in the house, he would agree to that. But I wouldn't want to do that. Okay, I'm not sure I, I heard the All whole right, thing. All right, Susan, this is another, this is another money problem. Um, our viewer feels that the family needs more money. Mm -hmm. I mean, for necessities, mm -hmm. not luxuries, right. for clothing for the children mm -hmm. and groceries and so on and so forth. There's a new um, department or chain opening close by. She'd like to get a job, but her husband feels that this would be degrading. He believes, obviously, that a woman belongs in the home. Okay, how do you, how do you resolve something okay. like that? Well, that's, that in some ways is a different problem because what you're now dealing with is a man's sense of self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems that um, this man must feel that it would somehow take away from his image of himself that his wife needs to work to meet the necessities, that he can't totally care for the family's needs. And I think, again, that um, what this woman should talk with her husband about is that, that sense that he's not enough of a man if he can't uh, provide for the family, that she doesn't feel that way, that in fact, um, I think 45% of women in America uh, are now working, and most of them for that very reason, that in today's society it's very difficult to mm -hmm. provide the necessities on one mm -hmm. salary. Uh, we have another phone call. Good morning, you're on the air with uh, Susan Stewart. Eleanor, I just wanted to make a comment that when I quit working two years ago, I had the problem of no money for myself or no money to buy my husband a gift or uh, anything like this. And we had quite a few squabbles about it. And what we finally decided to do was uh, my husband gave me a charge plate that he uh, didn't know how much I charged on this plate. It would come in the mail. He would not open it. It would not be paid to the checking account. It would be, uh, it would just be paid through my household fund that I would uh, take a cer certain amount out every week from my shopping money or whatever, and it has helped. Good. Uh, but what do you think of that idea? I mean, it, it obviously is working for them. Uh, what do you think, Susan? Yeah, actually, I'm for anything that works. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever it is, I suggested a checking or a savings account just because that's the most obvious. Uh, but actually, anything, cash in a drawer. You mm -hmm. know, that mm -hmm. there are no questions asked. That's whatever works for them. I think the important thing is to, to communicate and to, uh, to 
uh, accept the fact that there is a problem. Now, the, uh, the uh, woman that, that uh, just called a minute ago, obviously, before they reached that solution of having the, the charge card, they sat down and I'm sure they explored other things. There, there is a solution to the problem, but it is a serious problem, and I don't think that a woman should feel, uh, feel guilty because she resents the fact that she doesn't have her own money. At the same time, um, I think it's a, it's a question where a man has to recognize that, boy, that, that does, that, that just cuts off an awful lot of personal freedom when you, when you mm -hmm. don't have your own, your own uh, pocketbook to control. I want to thank Susan Stewart, family therapist at uh, Western Psychiatric, for being with us. We'll be back in just a few minutes, and next we're going to talk circus. something really exciting about having even this much of the circus next to you and when I say this much I, you can't see right now but I have uh, two of the members of the uh, circus and as you know the circus opened in Pittsburgh last night it'll run through Sunday at the Civic Arena this is Donna this is Axel we have okay Donna and <laughs> Axel and Axel is an elephant trainer and Donna rides the elephants. They are married. They have, what, two children. Can I ask yes. just a couple of personal questions first before we get into the real circus business? How old are your children? Uh, the oldest one is 13, and the younger one is eight. Two boys. Now, do they travel with you? They travel with <coughs> us. Uh, they're in school this morning. That's why they're not here. All right, now, and when you say in school, they're in school here in Pittsburgh. Where? Uh, well, on the circus train. They're tutored. Oh, well, that's a whole other story. That, that's very interesting. In other words, there are a whole group of children, and they travel, and they go to school, and they have a very normal lifestyle, but yes. it is... But they uh, work on, in the show also. You have your eight-year-old working? Mm -hmm. With the elephants. What? Okay, let's talk, about, uh, let's talk about the elephants. Axel, how, how do you train an elephant? When he's very young, he's the easiest. Well, even when he's very young, he's very big, though, and isn't well, that a problem? That's exactly what I mean. Um, of course, you can train a big elephant also, mm -hmm. but you have more weight to concede with. Mm -hmm. And, of course, if he's small... When he you say small, big. what is a small? Small is, uh, let's say, a year old, which will bring him up to about 1,000 pounds, 1,200 pounds. Mm -hmm. Are elephants smart? They are quite smart, yeah. They, 
I rank very you're, highly. You're, you're shaking your head, Donna. You seem to have, well, you have, I guess, a better feel because you work a little, probably even closer to them than Axel. I mean, when you're right right there. What do, tell me the, the, the scariest moment you had. Oh, I guess I've never really been that scared. Um, you're not afraid of height, then, obviously. I mean, because riding an elephant, and, and I'm, you know, in case none of you have ever done it, those of us in the news business have, uh, on occasion had to do s things like that, okay? <laughs> and I had to once, several years ago, and I was petrified. I didn't realize how high you are from the ground. It is kind of well, high, yeah. You could say the time when you were practicing standing on an elephant and you fall down, for instance, that's quite scary. Yeah, that's quite, that's quite a jolt. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Did you slip or did the elephant do something? Um, well, I'm not really sure. Oh, I remember one time I was very scared. I was Roman riding two elephants and one of them fell down on her mm -hmm. front legs. Well, it's like the floor just dropped out from under one of your legs. Oh. And, well, I don't know how I did it, but I just managed to jump on one and sit on her neck and I was fine. But it was kind of scary when so it happened. You, but, but you've never suffered any, any serious injury then? No. Have you, Axel, in training them, do you have any harrowing experience? No, nothing serious. Just getting stepped on a little bit. And stepped I guess the, on, the, stepped the, on the a biggest bit. thing was uh, <laughs> some broken ribs. That's about all, but nothing serious. Are, are there some elephants that you just can't train? I mean, are there really mean elephants? They're really oh, there tough are, elephants. Oh, there are, but uh, I think you can get them to do something. Do you have a pet? Do you have a favorite elephant? Well, there are a few of them there that I would call favorites, but with so many of them, you can't show favoritism. Oh, they're jealous? Well, they would get jealous, but then they more or less take advantage of you also, and, well, they don't want to quite work as right. Okay. How they're supposed to. They would say, in other words, well, uh, he kind of likes me, and uh, I can get away uh -huh. with this, and okay, I can get they, away with that. They, they are so smart. So you more then. or less have to be firm with them at all times. So like so. children, like right. children. Axel, Donna, they're with the circus. The circus will be in town from now through Sunday at the Civic Arena. Uh, maybe we should talk just really quickly. I mean, we've only talked about the elephants. What else is happening at the circus? Everything. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's aerial acts. There's acrobatic acts. There's horses, uh, tigers, polar bears a beautiful polar bear act. It's the first time in America for quite a few years from East Germany. A three-hour so, show. A three-hour show. So if you've been trying to think of what you want to do with the weekend, take the children, go down to the Civic Arena, and three hours of beautiful, beautiful fun and family entertainment. In case you uh, just tuned in, Yvonne Forsten is ill today. I'm Eleanor Shano. I've been sitting in for her. I have a very important reminder, though. Next Monday, the Yvonne Forsten Show, 9.30, so set your clocks. Thank you. Have a marvelous weekend.